relies on sleep in order to function properly. Your design, humans are designed to be awake at certain parts of the day and asleep at other parts of the day to recuperate. And so individuals who don't get enough sleep, whose sleep is fragmented, who sleep at the wrong times or have any number of other sleep disturbances impair their ability to maintain mental health. Um, and we know from the data that poor sleep, insomnia, these things over time increase the risk of developing depression, anxiety, PTSD even, um, and as well as suicidal thoughts and uh, uh, attempts at suicide. So it's really cr a big piece of mental health. Sleep plays a critical role in maintaining people's uh, mental health. And I think it's an under-addressed part of mental health as well. The study that we examined, or the study that we conducted, because we're interested in sleep and suicide in young adults, we surveyed undergraduates at our university, uh, some 885 of them, and we were asking them, you know, when do you go to bed, what time do you wake up, all these different parameters of sleep. And then we also asked them about their mental health history. Do you have depression? Do you have anxiety? Have you ever thought about suicide or even attempted suicide? We found that individuals who had uh, thought about suicide in the past three months slept less. Uh, they were awake more in the middle of the night when they should have been sleeping. They had more insomnia concerns, more nightmare, and they felt generally less in control of their sleep, that it wasn't something they were able to really manage or help on their own. Um, we also found that for individuals who had attempted suicide, that those differences uh, in sleep were, were even larger. So I think it was you know, 30 minutes or so more awake at night for the people who had thought about suicide. It was closer to an hour for those who had attempted suicide. So that's, and if that's per night, right, that's a lot of sleep loss that sort of accumulates over time. So there's fairly robust um, indicators of how much sleep was a problem for these folks. I think there are a couple of things that people can do if they really want to preserve their sleep or help them sleep well. The first is be consistent. Sleep is kind of a trained behavior. And so the more you're consistent about sleep, the, the more your brain will sort of line up to, to help you sleep. So what do I mean by that? I mean, go to bed at the same time, whether it's a working day or a weekday or, or a weekend. You know, those jumps between weekdays and weekends can really throw people off, especially if you're staying up really late on weekends to socialize or whatever. So be consistent and then wake up at the same time too. So even if you went to bed late or didn't sleep really well, don't try to extend the amount of time you spend in bed. Don't try to rescue yourself from a bad night of sleep. Those attempts at compensating are usually what lead people to have difficulty sleeping the next night. You know, if you if you accept that you're going to have a bad night and it's going to be tired for one day, it'll be easier to fall asleep the next night. So be consistent about your sleep schedule and don't try to compensate for a bad night of sleep by napping or sleeping in or something like that.